Hosea chapter number 32. Just going to read a couple verses. The Bible says in verse number 1, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of waters in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We're thankful, Lord, to be able once again to be able to come to the house of God. Lord, as we come this morning, we are a needy people. We are a blessed people. And we are a grateful people. Lord, we pray that you would once again manifest yourself in our service. We pray that, Lord, you would uh, certainly speak to hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, reveal yourself in an intimate and wonderful way to everyone in attendance this morning. I pray for those that may be here who are unsaved, lost without God. Lord, I pray that today you would speak to their hearts. I pray that you'd reveal unto them their lost condition. I pray that you'd help them to understand the importance of that today is the day of salvation. And I pray we'd see them birthed into the family of God. God, I pray for those in attendance this morning who may be heavy hearted. Lord, those who have faced hardships and heartaches. I pray that, God, you would reveal yourself as a balm of Gilead, as hope and help in time of need. And I pray that you would lift their heads and lift their hearts this morning. I pray for those that, Lord, may be here uh, seeking. I pray they'd find. I pray for those in the valleys that they'd find the lily in their valley. I pray for those on the mountaintops that, God, you would bless them uh, to shout from the mountaintops about the how wonderful you really are. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel, arrange the atmosphere, put a hedge about us, bind the powers of hell, and glorify your name. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. We find in Isaiah chapter number 32, we find a picture of the kingdom. My dear friends, if you're not a Bible student or do not understand Bible prophecy, uh, the next great event that will happen uh, in the prophecy of the Scriptures uh, is the translation of the saints or the rapture of the church uh, when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be called out of here, uh, uh, will rise to meet him in the air. Uh, 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 the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, uh, and so, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, after that, uh, there will be a great tribulation period on the face of the earth uh, where total anarchy uh, uh, will uh, uh, befall this earth, where the Antichrist will uh, 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 reveal himself and rule and reign over this old world uh, and they will attack Israel and try to destroy Israel uh, and when it looks like Israel uh, is about to go down uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is coming back and we're coming back with him he'll land uh, on the Mount of Olives uh, uh, he will stop the great battle that looks like Israel is going to be destroyed and he'll destroy all of Israel's enemies uh, and then he'll rule and reign from the throne of David for a thousand years uh, this is the kingdom or the millennial reign of Christ. Uh, notice, if you will, in verse number 1, the reign. We find that it says, uh, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. And can I say, he'll rule and reign with a rod of iron from the throne of David in righteousness. Uh, and what a blessing uh, uh, that all the world uh, that will be there that day will see the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice not only the reigning, the ruling. Look with it, me again in verse number 1. It says, uh, And princes shall rule in judgment. Who are those folks? Uh, those are, are the bride of Christ, the redeemed of the Lamb. Those are you and I that are saved, blood-bought, washed in the uh, uh, blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, 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 we're that crowd uh, that's going to rule and reign with Him in the kingdom. Uh, but then notice, if you will, the rock in verse number 2. 
It says, A man shall, and we're talking about the Lord Jesus again, A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. I'm glad for the rock of ages. I'm glad he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, I'm glad he's in control. Uh, I'm glad nothing has caught him off guard. Uh, I'm glad he'll sustain you today. Uh, he'll sustain you tomorrow. Uh, he's going to sustain the kingdom. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, he is the Lord and the King of kings. Uh, I got to reading this the other day, and I got to thinking about the Lord Jesus. And with his help for just a few minutes, I want to preach on the greatness of Jesus. The greatness of Jesus. Now let me on the onset just kind of say this this morning. There are not enough words in our vocabulary to describe how great Jesus is. Can I say there are not enough emotions to be experienced uh, 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 to let you uh, uh, absorb how great Jesus is? Uh, can I say there's not enough Sundays in a month uh, uh, to begin to exalt uh, uh, how great Jesus is? But just let me say he's great. Uh, the psalmist said he's great uh, and greatly to be praised. Uh, uh, I'm glad he's a great uh, uh, Lord and a great king. Uh, 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 but can I say hallelujah, I'm glad he revealed his greatness unto me. Uh, can I say starting off, he's a great Savior. Mm. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. He's the Savior of the world. There is no hope in any other. If you hadn't figured it out, there isn't any hope, and no matter who's sitting in the Oval Office at the White House. Mm. Uh, there's no hope who's sitting in the governor's mansion. There's no hope who's the CEO of the company. Uh, but there is hope today, and hope comes in Jesus. He is a great Savior. Uh, uh, can I say this about Him? He paid a debt uh, that we could not pay. Uh, uh, every one of us were born sinners. Uh, we love sin. We practice sin. Uh, 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 we were partakers of sin. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that sin that uh, uh, we enjoyed and were parts of uh, and partook of, uh, uh, it had a wage. Uh, and the wages of sin was death. Uh, and friends, there were no hope for sinners. Uh, you couldn't work your way to heaven. Uh, you couldn't build a bridge to heaven. Uh, you wasn't going to heaven. Uh, you were going to pay for your sins in the lake of fire forever and ever. Uh, but Jesus came. Uh, and He came uh, uh, seeking to pay a debt uh, that He did not owe. Uh, but a debt that we could not pay. Uh, and He took the handwriting of ordinances that were against us. Uh, the law. Uh, and He nailed them to His cross. Uh, and He took our sins in His body. Uh, and He shed His blood to be the propitiation of our sins. Uh, and He paid for our sins on Calvary's mountain. Uh, he's a great Savior. I'll tell you something, Joe Biden wouldn't die for you. And if he did, he couldn't save you. Uh, I want to tell you, Jesus didn't have to die, but he chose to die. Uh, and he died for one purpose, to be a great Savior, to save you from your sins. Uh, he paid a debt he did not owe. Can I say this? Uh, he per performed a work no one else could. Uh, what he did on Calvary, no one else could do. Uh, can I say it was prophesied in Genesis 3.15 that he was coming uh, and that he would go to Calvary and he'd bruise Satan's head uh, on Calvary. Uh, and can I say from Exodus chapter 12 uh, until he died on Calvary, uh, every lamb offered, uh, every goat offered, uh, every bullock offered uh, was a picture that one day uh, he would come and offer himself uh, for you and I. Uh, and on the cross of Calvary, uh, a work that took uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of prophecy to come to fruition. Uh, he cried with a loud voice, uh, It is finished. Uh, and he finished the work of redemption uh, for you and I. And no one else could do that. Uh, I'm talking about him. I'm talking about the greatness of Jesus. No one has ever drawn breath or walked on the earth 
that could do what Jesus did on Calvary some 2,000 years ago. Uh, he paid a debt he did not owe. He performed a work no one else could. And can I say this? He pardoned a crowd no one else would. Uh, he just didn't come to die for blue bloods. He didn't come to die for the good and the rich and the pretty. He came for the all scour of the world. Uh, he come and died for drunks and drug addicts. Uh, he died for sinners. Uh, hey, he was the known as the friend of sinners and publicans. Uh, uh, the crowd no one else would have given a second look for. Uh, he said, I'll die for him. That's my crowd. Uh, and he tasted death for every man. Uh, and he made a way that you and I could be saved. Uh, I'm telling you, Jesus is a great Savior. Could I say this? Uh, He's a great stability. Look at verse two eight, and a man. Uh, verse two, uh, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Mm. He's a great stability. When everything else is getting blown away, he just is stable, steadfast. You can count on him. There is no variance or turning with him. Ah. Uh, can I say he's stable against the deceptions of men? No matter how many lies comes out of Washington, he's always faithful and true. No matter how many fibs are told, he's steadfast and true. No matter how many cults come along, he's faithful and true. He's a great stability. Not only against the deception of men, so against the doctrines of devils. Yep. Had a missionary last week and shed some light on some of the doctrines of the devils of the Mormon, I hate to call it a church, the Mormon religion. Doctrines of devils. Mm, they're not the only cult in the world. Anything that denies Jesus Christ, His deity, and His glory is a cult. Uh, you say, uh, 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 what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is he's stable. He's always been and always will be, and his word is true. Uh, why do you think every generation there comes up a new crowd wants to try and take away from the word of God? Because it's been stable. Because it's been inspired and written by him. Can I say he's great stability against discouragement and doubts and fears you live long enough you're going to get discouraged I promise you if you put your faith in a man you're going to find discouragement if you put your faith in anything you're going to face doubt and fear the one thing that will never discourage you the one thing that will never cause you to doubt and the one thing that will never bring fear to you is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a great stability. He's a great Savior. Can I say this? He's a great shelter. Look again at verse number 2. It said, uh, and a covert from the tempest. Huh? I'm glad He shelters us from some things. A few years ago, my father-in-law, my two brother-in-laws and I were playing golf in Florida. I don't know if you know much about Florida. But any given moment, the sunshine can turn into a thunderstorm. We're playing golf. It was a good day because my two brother-in-laws are younger. And they were going to beat the two old guys. They got matching shirts. They really thought this was their year. By the eighth hole, they were throwing clubs. Them two old guys may not be able to hit it as far as them, but... We got a little wisdom behind us. We got on the tenth hole, and there came a gully washer of a storm. I'm talking about we hopped in the carts and was headed for the clubhouse. Brother Brian, we didn't get off the tenth hole, and the water's coming in the golf cart. I mean, it'd come up that quick. I mean, there was no place for it to go except in the golf cart. And there was a little shelter just a little bitty old shelter. We pulled up next to him, got in there, and it protected us from the rain and the lightning and the storm. 
thank the Lord for some shelters along life's way. Can I say he's a shelter from the tempest? One writer said you're either in a storm, you're coming out of a storm, or you're fixing to head into a storm. Life is full of storms. Uh, Sometimes you can look out on the horizon and see one coming. Uh, Other times they just blow up out of nowhere, uh, and there it is. Uh, uh, Sometimes it's a thunderstorm. Uh, Sometimes it's a lightning storm. Uh, Sometimes it's a hailstorm. Sometimes it's a rainstorm. Uh, But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, If you're out there in a storm and there's no protection, it's worse. Uh, But hey, hallelujah in Christ. Uh, Hey, we got a shelter from the storms. Uh, Let the winds blow. Uh, Let the lightning flash. Uh, Let the storms come. Uh, Hey, Jesus, uh, I will shelter you from the harm of the storms. Uh, Hey, he's a shelter from the tempest of your turmoils. Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. Sometimes you face some turmoil in this life. Can I say most of the time you don't sign up for it. It just finds you. Mm. Uh, we went over to Brother Bob Miss Sonny's yesterday. That was a real blessing. About halfway over there, Miss Tammy, her, her and Brother Thad rode with us, and my daughter, Miss Sydney, started getting car sick. And I started hearing what every parent hears out of their children. Are we almost there yet? And like every good parent, you lie. Yep, we're almost there. Knowing we aren't anywhere close. Finally, I said, we just got to go up this hill, and they're up at the top of the hill. I didn't tell them the hill's four miles up, winding roads. We got out of the car, and they got out and kissed the ground. What a blessing. Tried to blame it on my driving. Oh, they're the ones that live over there, not me. Uh, I want to tell you something. Sometimes you're going to face some turmoil that you didn't expect. But Jesus will shelter you in your turmoil. He may not remove the turmoil, but when he steps in, the turmoil doesn't matter anymore. He's a shelter of the turmoil. He's a shelter of your trials. Sometimes your faith is being tried, and sometimes just life is a big trial. But I've got news for you. He's a shelter for it. He's a shelter for your temptation. I want to tell you something. The devil throws snares at all of us. But the Lord Jesus, if you just run to the Lord Jesus, one side of him, the devil will leave you alone. And can I say he's a shelter from all tragedy? Boy, you'll face tragedy in life. I did a funeral on Friday, and that, that family didn't have much hope. I tried to give them some hope. But it breaks your heart when you're looking at families that don't have hope. If they just put their faith in the Lord, oh, they'd find a shelter even in the midst of their tragedy. He's a great shelter. He's sheltered me from a lot of danger over the years. I promise you when we get to heaven, we'll see how many times that he in the shadows directed our course to take us off route of which way we were headed because there was shipwreck right up ahead. Mm. Can I say this? He's not only a great shelter. He's not only a great stability and a great Savior. He's a great source. Uh, look what it says in verse number 2. He's a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place. I'm glad it don't matter how dry this world gets. I've got a source. I have some living water that bubbles up that'll help me regardless of what is going on. Can I say he's a source of refreshment? He's a source of revival, and he's even a source of rest. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, Hebrews 4, 9. He's a source. I'm glad I'm drinking from a well. This world has no idea what, it is, what it's about. Hmm? You know, as Christians, that's our job is to tell sinners they can get a drink of living water. And it changed their life for now and all of eternity. Mm -mm. I'm glad he's a great source in my life. It doesn't matter how dry, it doesn't matter how dark, it doesn't matter how, if I can just get him, 
everything will be all right. Then I thought about this lastly. He's a great shadow. Look what it says. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. You know, I read something about shadows. In order to have a shadow, it takes light and a presence to provide a shadow. I'm glad he's the light and he's the presence we need in our life. To provide a shadow from everything that we will face that will do us harm. huh? He's a shadow from the heat. Well, it's been hot the last couple of days. We didn't even have spring. We just went right to summer. Hmm? Been hot. huh? I went yesterday and watched little Joseph play, play ball. I thought I was going to watch Charlie play ball, but, you know, that's what happens when you read them, them schedules back there without your glasses on. Sorry I missed you. Had to deal with your knothead brother, okay? But can I say something about watching them play ball? About the second pitch, I didn't care anymore. It was hot. <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't even have a dog in the fight, and I'm out here sweating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> can I say? You go through this life, you're going to face some heat. All you got to do is let people know you believe the Bible and trust in Jesus. You're going to face some heat. Hmm. But we have a shadow for the heat that comes our way. That no matter how much discouragement, how much distress comes our way, His presence makes all that melt away. Huh? I, I, I've used this before. It probably didn't happen, but I like to use it. Can you imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, heated up seven times hotter than it had ever been, and they're in there with him? They don't feel a thing. Probably one of them asked if he had a sweater. There's a little chilly in there, huh? You say, what are you talking about? It doesn't matter how hot it is when you're in his presence. Nothing else matters. It's all right, huh? Because he's a great shadow from your heat. Can I say this? He's a shadow from the heartaches. You're going to face some heartaches. A lot of times the heartaches that hurt the most is when it's your own family. Your own family mock you from coming to the house of God. Or your own family don't understand why you believe what you believe and stand for what you stand for. And those wounds cut deep. But just the light of his countenance. He steps in and he's a shadow from that heartache. All of a sudden there's a balm of Gilead to help heal those scars. He's also a shadow from the headaches. I don't know about you, but sometimes my head hurts at the ignorance of going on in this country right now. I thought we had an education system that taught people how to be smart. Miss Sidney told me about something she read the other day. This guy said he graduated college and came out and he wasn't a liberal. That's a feat. But I mean, whatever happened to people like Walter Cronkite that did the news? You could have confidence that he was telling you some truth. Whatever happened to people that stood for things that were right? Ronald Reagan was a perfect man, but man, he stood for some things that were right for America. We have politicians on both sides of the fence that are in Washington today that hate America. They're doing everything they can to erode America and destroy America. Mark her down. This thing's headed toward the Antichrist. And the only way America would become part of a one world government is if America is no more. But I want to tell you something. You can get a headache just trying to figure out life nowadays. Shoot, you can get a headache trying to figure out that roundabout out there. That is a goofy thing. I do not know one person has said one positive thing about that. Huh? There's nobody goes through that thing and says, what a blessing. <laughs> Everybody drives through that and says, what idiot put this thing here? That's a minor thing, but we face a lot of headaches in this life. 
Huh? They look at you like you're a terrorist if you don't wear a mask. I remember if you wore a mask, you was a terrorist. Huh? Now they say, all you got to do is be vaccinated and you don't have to wear the mask. Take this thing that the FDA hasn't signed off on or approved yet. And you can take a refrigerator magnet and stick it up your arm and it'll stick. Yeah, I want that in my body. You'll glow at night, but you don't have to wear a mask. It cause you headaches. You look at what these little fellows are facing. Remember when you used to go to school and just enjoy going to school and reading, writing, arithmetic? These little guys got to go to school and worry about bullying and masks and liberal teachers with purple hair and... Uh, all kinds of headaches. But I've got good news. If you can look unto Jesus... Yeah the author and finisher of our faith and take your eyes off of what's going around and look a little higher you'll find he's great greatly to be praised and what's going on in this world really don't matter anymore I found this poem let me read this to you there's not a craving of the mind which Jesus cannot fill there's not a pleasure I would seek aside from his dear will. From hour to hour he fills my soul with peace and perfect love. While rich supplies for every need he sendeth from above. The joys which this vain world bestows have lost their charms for me. Once I enjoyed its trifles too, but Jesus set me free. Its joy will perish in a day. Its pleasures quickly fly. Its mirth like mist will pass away, and all its honors die. He stilled the angry tempest's power which raged within my heart, and bade each sinful passion there to speedily depart. Yes, Jesus is my all in all. He satisfies my soul. For me he died on Calvary, and now he makes me whole. Yes, Jesus is my Savior dear, my rock, my strength, my song, my wisdom and my refuge safe. To Jesus I belong. He's my advocate with God, my way, my life, my light, my great physician and my friend, my guide by day and night. The author is unknown, but you know what he's saying? Jesus is great. If you don't know him today, you don't really know what life's about. And friend, I fear for you because he could take his church out of here right now and you'd be left. And strong delusion come on you. You'd be a, believe a lie and be damned to hell forevermore. Friend, why would you want to die and go to hell? You don't have to. Jesus paid your debt. He wants to save you from your sin. The moment we're going to have an invitation. Once you come, just believe on the Lord and be saved today. So, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, we'll show you how to be saved. You could be here today, and you're saved, but you've lost your joy. Why don't you get back to Jesus? could be here today, and you know, life's headaches and heartaches have got you overwhelmed. Well, I've got good news. Just get back to Jesus. He'll help you this morning. Amen. You could be here facing a number of things. Friend, I may not have the answers, but I know who does. His name is Jesus. When was the last time he truly was great in your life and you let him know how great he really is? If he's not great, it's because you've pushed him off to the side. Why don't you give him first place again? You'll see how great he really is. Let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. It's him, Miss Renee, come. Some are already coming and praying. If you're here today not saved, why don't you slip out and come. Let us introduce you to the Lord. While these are coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for being so great. Lord, we couldn't take a breath without you. Couldn't get out of bed without you. Lord, we're feeble and needy. 
But Lord, we're so thankful you come by our way. You help us with everything we face. Lord, we bless your holy name. God, I fear my soul there may be some here this morning who aren't ready to meet you. I pray they'd come give their heart and life to you. Lord, there may be some here saved, but Lord, they've lost the joy of their salvation. Help them to come. Lord, get that joy restored. Lord, just do a work around here this morning. We'll bless you and praise you for it. Speak to hearts now, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.